Hello guys and welcome to my channel. This is Claude. After working all this time modeling in Blender, uh, there is no doubt in my mind that unwrapping and editing UVs is probably the most tedious job. It takes so much time to unwrap texture and paint a model. It's basically a time killer. So if you're like me, programming and building 3D models in the same time, you would know that uh, making art takes more time than programming. And I personally am not a 3D artist. I'm a programmer. That's what I went to school for. But needless to say, I do love 3D modeling. I, I love doing it, so I'm not going to sit here and bitch about it. So all I want to say is that when making a game, the biggest time killer is going to be your art. So I always try to find new ways to produce these models or my art as fast as possible. So tonight I thought I'd share a technique that I developed in the last few weeks. A very simple, I mean, I'm not going to say very simple, simple enough to build a decent looking model with decent textures as fast as possible. So let me show you here on the arm of this mech, I got metal shown through here with the paint. Then I got cracked paint. I got dirt right here. The metal lettering is shown through the paint. As you see here, I got rust on this uh, disc-shaped mesh right here. And I got worn paint with rust showing through. So take a look for yourself. And you decide, let me know in the comments. And also let me know in the comments if you have a better technique than this after watching the video. And I understand that this is not going to replace substance paint or anything like that. But, you know, for somebody like, like me who is on a budget and, and does uh, indie games most of the time for free, this could, this could work out. So for this tutorial, other than Blender, you need some kind of painting program. I use Photoshop, but I'm sure you can use GIMP or Krita or any other decent painting software. And you'll need Materialize. If you don't know what Materialize is, it's basically a piece of software that takes uh, texture and makes it into a PBR material. I will leave a link in the description. Also, you need the Node Wrangler add-on to simplify the nodes which comes with Blender. All you have to do is go into the Preferences, Add-ons, and find Node Wrangler. And also we'll need a texture, which, uh, I mean, you can get it anywhere you want on the internet, or I'll leave a link in the description for a decent website that you can find a bunch of textures that you can use. So let's begin. All right, guys, so I'm going to begin selecting this object, which is separate from the rest of the mesh. And I'm going to begin by pressing Control A, apply a rotation and scale. And what I want to do is uh, take the teeth and make them into a separate object so I can put a different material on them, like a metal. And then the rest of the mesh will be like a paint, maybe same color as the legs, like a yellow. So let me see how I can do that. Maybe select all these vertices. Maybe press C and select all of them with circle select. Now, I can see that there is no line here between them, so it's probably going to select the whole thing if I press Control plus. So I'm going to have to go with a knife. So I'm going to take the knife and cut through here on each side. So K, let's begin here. It's one, and then I'm going to press E and then go to the next one. And then enter. And I'm going to have to select the rest of them. With, I'm going to press C again and select the rest of them. Right click and then C again. And then right click again. Press 3 to select faces. Now press P. Selection. 
tab and let's click on them. Let's press G and just grab them, see if they're separated. And then I'm just going to right click to put them back in place. So now I got uh, two separate objects. I got this scoop itself and the teeth. So let's do the teeth first because it's probably going to be easier. So I'm going to shade it smooth and then go here into the object data properties and select auto smooth and it depends how smooth you want the angles you can tweak with this setting right here now with the teeth selected in object mode go to object origin to geometry control a rotation and scale also do the same thing for this now go into edit mode with tab select and select sharp edges and then control e and mark seam now go into uv editing press 3 to select faces a to select everything and then u and then unwrap and you'll have something like this and by the way i use conformal right here in the method and i put 0 0.020 to have a little bit of space between each UV. Make sure you have all the faces selected by pressing A. Go to UV, export UV layout. And my recording software is not going to show the window because it's set to record only Blender. But make sure that the file size is 2048 by 2048. You'll see the size on the right hand side of the window. And also make sure you place it into a folder because later on in Materialize we will be making a bunch of uh, PBR textures and they'll need to be placed in the same folder. So we'll see you guys in Photoshop. All right, guys. So here we are in Photoshop and I got my texture open. Let's add another layer called the layer to main or whatever you want to call it. Then select W and select this uh, previous layer, the, the original layer, and just click anywhere in the empty space. Then press Control Shift I to invert the selection. And with this layer selected, layer one, just delete it, the trash can. And now you only have the selection. Now choose a color that you want to use. As I said before, this is going to be like a metal texture. I'm going to make it kind of grayish. And now press G and just click inside one of these shapes. You'll get something like this. Press Control D to deselect it. Now let's add a couple more layers. This one, let's call it edges. And another one, and let's call this one texture. and drag the texture all the way down on the bottom now it's time to open a texture so i'm going to open a texture okay so this texture opened in a new tab now i'm going to go into image and then adjustments and play with the saturation and take it down Now, if you texture something like paint or a car, you don't need to do this. I'm doing this just because this is going to be mostly metal. You'll see how it'll look like in the end. Press Control A, Control C, and then Control D to deselect. Go back into the original tab and make sure the texture layer is selected and just press Control V to paste it. Now, click on the main layer, choose uh, I'm going to choose multiply, but you can choose anything you want. Now click on texture again, right click, and then duplicate layer and just leave it as is. Make sure that picture copy is selected and press Control Alt L for the levels. I'm going to make it a little bit darker and you'll see why in a second. The darker you're going to make it, the more the texture is going to show through the original layer. Then when you're happy, click OK. Now hide the main layer and then Control A, Control C and Control D. Click on the main layer and add a mask. Now to see what's inside the mask, hold Alt down and just click on the mask. 
there's nothing in here and we're going to paste that texture control v and photoshop is going to automatically desaturate it completely and now to see how it looks like just click on the main layer and as you see you can barely see the original texture right now now just click on the texture copy and delete it and you'll have something like this let me deselect it with control d now hide the texture here at the eye and you can barely see the original texture just click on it and then click w and click anywhere in the empty space to reselect it then press shift control i to invert the selection again and now we selected all the triangles or the shapes again now to convert we're going to have to convert this uh, selection into a path so we can stroke with a brush so you have to go into paths the conversion button is right here down here and it looks like a little square or something and just click that and you have something like that then press on the layers panel again and then show the texture again and you'll get something like this it's time to get the paint ready so press b for brush and let's choose a color i'm going to choose something dark make sure the edges layer is selected press b for a brush if you hold alt and the right mouse button down and drag you can resize your brush so my opacity is down to 21 percent i'm going to take it up to like 90 something let's see how it looks like now uh, that brush is too big i'm going to take it down so and by the way you're going to need a spongy brush you can find brushes on the internet or one of the brushes that comes with photoshop okay let me go into the brush settings right here and you'll see that i got uh, shape dynamics on noise and wet edges i'm also going to turn scattering on okay i'm going to press p and then right click and stroke path make sure brush is selected and click ok and i'm going to go even darker just a little bit press b again and change the size again then press p and right click and stroke path again and then press b again take the scattering off and strike it again press p and then right click and stroke path again so i did it three times the idea is to build layers from the widest stroke to the smallest if you're done just click delete the darker the color is going to be the more rusty is going to look and the lighter the color is and the more metallic is going to look so it's up to you you can also just uh, take the brush and add yourself some more strokes in the corners just make it look even rustier but i'm not going to just for the purpose of this tutorial and also you can make the brush bigger and do something like this even take the opacity down and do something like that so i'm going to press Control alt l again i'm going to take the saturation down and i'm going to make it lighter so it looks more metallic just like that so if you're ready just save it as a png to a folder of your choice that make sure that uh, you save it to a new folder that's dedicated to this texture because in materialize you'll make uh, about five or six textures from this texture so they need to be in the same folder so see you guys in materialize all right guys so here we are in materialize on the diffuse map click the o button to open the texture that we just made and uh, this is kind of awkward to navigate you might have to go to drives and navigate to wherever you stored it uh, luckily i got it on my favorites okay so just open it and then copy it with c and paste it in each and every one of these uh spots now you're gonna have to click create on all of them except the diffuse map and then set as whatever map it is on the normal i'm going to take it just a little bit on the angularity up and i'm going to do that on the metallic as well just to make it look more metallic that's definitely up to you however you want to set it and now make sure png is selected and just save the project and give it a name 
And Materialize is going to rename it for you according to each map. And that's it. Uh, let's go back in Blender. And if you don't see the shader right here, just click New up here. Uh, make sure you have the object that you want to texture selected. And then click on this uh, shader. Basically, it's got a white line all the way around. And then push Shift Control T. And just select all the textures. Blender will do everything for you. So this is it. Let's go back into layout. Maybe do a small render. Oh, this is what we got, guys. All right, guys, I'm going to do the scoop real fast. So we'll see how it looks like in the end.
And there you have it, guys, the finished model. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Consider subscribing for more tutorials like this. And we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.